To set the stage, uh, I thought I'd begin by actually saying a few words about the conventional Big Bang theory uh, as it stood uh, before inflation appeared on the scene. The underlying principle of this conventional Big Bang theory is that the universe as we know it uh, began some finite time ago, and now we think that time is 13.82 uh, plus or minus 0.05 uh, billion years ago. Uh, the initial state was a hot, dense, uniform soup of particles uh, that filled space uniformly. Um, there's a popular cartoon image of a, an egg that's sitting in the middle of an empty space and suddenly explodes. That really never was the scientific picture uh, of the Big Bang. Uh, the point is that we see the universe being completely homogeneous, and inflation, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, helps to explain that. Uh, but in the context of the conventional Big Bang theory, which is what I'm setting the stage up for now, uh, this homogeneity had to simply be put in in the initial conditions. Uh, so it was assumed from the beginning that all the matter filled space completely uh, and was in fact already uh, expanding. So the question you might ask is uh, what existed before that? Uh, and the answer is who knows? Uh, we really have no idea what came before the Big Bang. Uh, there are some speculative theories that people have put together, but they're quite speculative. There's no general agreement on uh, what happened before the Big Bang. I uh, might add here that the conventional Big Bang is often described uh, as the statement that space and time came into existence at the instant of the Big Bang. Um, that's a possibility, but it's certainly nothing that you should, uh, you should bet on, uh, because we really have no way of knowing. And in fact, in the picture of eternal inflation, which you'll be hearing about later, uh, our Big Bang was actually just one event in a larger picture and was not really the beginning of anything in the absolute sense. So uh, the picture is that within about 10 to the minus 35 seconds or so of when our region began to evolve, uh, which would happen whether we have eternal inflation or appearance out of nothing, inflation uh, began. Uh, so what is inflation? Uh, inflation is a theory uh, which is sometimes I describe as the bang of the Big Bang. Uh, that is, uh, the conventional Big Bang theory really started with the universe already expanding. In spite of the fact that it's called the Big Bang theory, it really says nothing about the bang itself in the sense of what caused the tremendous period of expansion that we're still seeing uh, the remnant of. That is, the conventional Big Bang theory is really only the theory of the aftermath of a bang. Uh, but inflation uh, actually is a possible answer to the question of what propelled the gigantic expansion of the Big Bang. And before inflation, the expansion was, as I said, just assumed. Uh, so inflation explains this expansion uh, in terms of gravitational repulsion, a uh, repulsive form of gravity, uh, which is somewhat novel to physics. Uh, in Newtonian physics, gravity is always attractive. Uh, but in the context of general relativity, uh, gravity can become uh, repulsive. The idea of repulsive gravity uh, to me, it's so novel, in the overall span of my life at least, uh, that I consider it kind of a miracle of physics, where I'll define a miracle of physics of, as anything that I would not have believed to have been true when I got my PhD. Uh, <laughs> and one of those is repulsive gravity. Uh, even though it was part of the theory of general relativity, it was not widely talked about. Infl the theory of inflation from this method of counting miracles uh, depends actually on two miracles. Uh, and the first of those uh, is this miracle of gravitational repulsion. Uh, and the point is that uh, since the advent of, of general relativity, uh, physicists have known that gravity can act repulsively. Um, and in fact, Einstein did use this option uh, very early on uh, in 1917 when he built his own model of cosmology. Uh, as you may know, he introduced this concept of a cosmological constant, which is basically a, a method of invoking this repulsive form of gravity, uh, because he was trying to build a static model of the universe. And he wanted a mechanism uh, that would oppose the normal force of gravity uh, so that he could prevent the universe uh, from collapsing under the force of, of normal gravity. Uh, so general relativity allows for this repulsive gravity, uh, and in fact, modern particle physics uh, suggests that at very high energies, uh, there should exist st states of matter that do the same thing as the cosmological constant does, uh, causing this repulsive form of gravity uh, to come into effect. 
Uh, so according to general relativity, a gravitational field can be created by pressures as well as energy densities. And that's really the key to allowing the possibility of repulsive gravity. And it's really dictated by the relativistic invariance of the theory. Uh, the point is that what looks like a pressure in one reference frame uh, would contribute to the energy density to a moving observer. Uh, and that means that in a theory that's going to work for all observers, moving or not, uh, they have to both be part of the source of gravity. Um, so the way pressures work is pretty much what you would probably guess. Uh, positive pressures, uh, which are sort of normal pressures, uh, lead to normal gravity, which means attractive gravity. Uh, but then you might infer that if there could be such a thing as negative pressures, a negative pressure really is a kind of a suction, uh, a negative pressure would produce a repulsive gravitational field. Uh, the equation that actually describes the acceleration of the expansion of the universe uh, is the equation shown here. Uh, A is the scale factor. Uh, the scale factor describes the overall proportion of the universe. Whenever the scale factor doubles, it means that all distances in the universe have doubled. Uh, and uh, the acceleration of the scale factor is given by this formula, which is usually dominated by the first term, uh, the mass density. Um, and that makes the acceleration negative, which corresponds to attraction, slowing down the expansion. Um, the pressure term appears here as a relativistic correction. Notice the 1 over c squared in the denominator, which is the hallmark of a relativistic correction. It would be 0 if c were infinite. Um, but if the pressure is negative, uh, that would allow this expression in parentheses to change sign, uh, causing the acceleration of the universe to be positive instead of negative, a uh, gravitational repulsion. Um, and in fact, if the energy density is dominated uh, by the potential energy of a scalar field, uh, which can happen in states that we expect from particle physics, uh, you find out that exactly the pressure is equal to minus the mass density times c squared. Uh, which means that the second term is three times as big as the first term, but with the opposite sign. Uh, so it overcomes it, uh, producing gravitational repulsion. 